fingers here tonight. So, uh, Brother Terry, you want something to refer to? Father, we only bow before you, thank you, Lord, for this day. Another day of life, another day of grace. But we pray you for the opportunity to gather tonight, Lord. With our heart, Lord, we pray that you just draw tonight. God, help our ears to be open to hear what you're speaking. And Lord, bless the event tonight, Lord, whether it's the preach of preaching, the singer singing, testimony, or your spirit that's not coming, Lord, coming to draw them a little closer. Maybe even a lost person, Lord, to come to faith in Christ. Father, we pray that you'd have your way here tonight. God, we pray that the name of Jesus alone would be magnified. And Lord, if that's done, Lord, I'm sure we can all leave things and do it even now. Thank you tonight, Father, for every one of the children to be here. There's some that are still yet complimenting or thinking about coming, Lord. I pray that you put a press upon their heart what they need to do. And we pray this for it in Jesus' holy name. Thank you. more excited than me. He got there half an hour early. And uh, he couldn't wait to tell me the news, but he's a contractor and he's agreed to redo the inside for us for free. Praise God. Amen. He said, I know it's really bothering him not to be here. But he knows about it. He said, well, I think that we ought to help our brothers and sisters out there as we can. And he said, now, if they, it, it's just such a nightmare. You don't have enough time to hear all this. Like, uh, he says, um, 
if they should give you some money and you want to uh, slide a little bit my way, he goes, I won't turn it down. But he said, if you don't, he said, I just want to really help things out. Yes. Right. And um, so here I'm thinking, well, you know how busy everybody is right now. We're months behind. So he probably won't be able to get to us until July or August, you know. Oh, he said, if you if you'll accept my offer, he said, my guys will be here at eight in the morning. Said the church ought to be the prettiest building on the street, and Ireland is looking pretty shabby. But uh, this is the church right here. You know, it's not the building, but we still, you know, want it to get done. And uh, we're thankful for that tonight. And um, Amen. Amen. I got something to say. If God can control the universe, He created everything. so weird. I know we're in revival, but we're, I'm getting revived a little bit right now. Um, Brother Gary, uh, Ray, he was here last night, and he, uh, he said, I got a granddaughter named Mallory that needs some uh, community service hour. Apparently now you can't graduate from high school until you do like 15 hours of community service. And he said, uh, would you let her come over there? And I said, well, somebody got to come with her. He said, yeah, so Sister Karen uh, came with her. And um, I didn't really think about it, Brother Mike, but I just kept talking about the church and about the Lord and all the good things that God has done or something like that. And uh, Sister Brayden, after it was all over, she goes, you realize that you were testifying to her for, for an hour? And I'm like, I guess. And uh, sometimes it's easy to talk about the Lord, you know. And um, and it's just been that God has uh, been moving on me so much that uh, um, if that all happened just for her to get saved, it's worth it. Amen. 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 Even though it's driving me crazy, you know, um, but it's okay. It's it's, it's okay. Amen. Um, yeah, good stuff. Three thirty nine. Glory.
Christ to him that's come in and there might be somebody here that you've not seen in a while. Uh, might want to hug her neck and tell his love. I don't know why Arnie hasn't done that to me yet. I know he misses me. <laughs> Can't depend on the guitar players at all. Can't you? Not, <laughs> not. not depend on them. No, Jerry Brady does. Uh, <laughs> you know that, don't you, Grace River Need? I think so. What is it? Okay. The rule is if we don't know it, you can delete it. You <laughs> <laughs> guys don't want to hear that. <laughs> cool. There's no light service in it, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. <laughs>
her request for testimony I'd like to bring forward. I'd like you to remember my Aunt Mary up in uh, Curtis, Michigan. My, my uncle Sid passed away all of a sudden last week. If you have any prayer requests, let us know. It's been a real hard uh, time for her, so please remember her. And remember my cousin in the South <coughs> in a hard time right now. And God knows all about it, and I know God can heal from from it. His name is Gary, please just remember him. And I came to work this morning and uh, one of the, my, my boss actually of the bus drivers or some of the accident last night. And uh, I just request prayer for him. You know, God knows him and she said he's okay, but it's not a good situation. So please be in prayer for, for her and her family. Any others? Remember my Uncle Howard. Remember Shelly Opperman both the battle with cancer. Remember both people. Any others? I understand I need a prayer, and I have a couple of cousins I would like you to remember, and would like to have you remember our pastor in your prayers. Remember this. Any others? Take our prayers in prayer. Uh, and read you and my family. No, they don't they don't have a clue of the dangers they're in. I have no one have them either. I don't even know how they lay down at night sleep. You know, they don't wake. They're they're doomed. I mean, tell them not a place for me to go. You want to avoid it like the plague, you know, you they may just think there's nothing going in. They need to they know they need to Nothing else. I'm glad I know that. Amen. Remember all the vacation Bible schools that are coming up too. There's a lot of children even on you know on, on my bus and I passed out flyers for BBS and stuff and I don't know if that's really like frowned upon or what, but uh, I don't care. I want them to come because they're just they they don't know about the Lord and right. it's the most important and they're just young. And BBS is very, very important. Very important. You need to be in prayer for, for Grace and for here and for everywhere. Everywhere that that's having BBS for all those young young people that may not even ever learn about Jesus only in BBS. You never know. Remember this. Any others? Remember the survival. God knows we need revival in our land. Amen. It's not work this morning. It's uh, Gene Grigsby. Hopefully any of you that have been part of Grigsby was a pastor of our church for a long time. His wife Jean passed away this morning. And um, actually, I found out today, I've been talking to Paul, <coughs> different ones, but they're going to bring her back to Michigan. His brother Arnie's buried there at Rath next to Grace. And that just really broke my heart because I'm sure that she was the family car thinking about we'll have it at the old church. And then I'm going to be sitting on buckets, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I don't know where they're going to have the service when they're going to do it. But uh, remember them, they'll be traveling, coming up here. You know, and um, that she, um, she was really good to me. You know, and uh, I keep coming, but I ask that you go to Sister Sandy. I got a cousin who was down in Kentucky and he's been drunk since he was 16 and he's 53 now. He's never been a day in all those and from 16 on until today he's not been drunk every single day. He drinks about almost a case of beer every day. And he, uh, he always says to me, Brother Perry, he said, don't worry about me, Dave, I'm good. But the coldest beer I'm ever going to drink will be the one I drink in hell. Yeah. I haven't read that yet. I'm not, very, I'm not very smart, but I haven't read that part just yet. I don't know. I think it's in the 25th chapter of the book of Revelation. I'll get to it. I'm being totally sarcastic here, but Brother Mikey, no matter how much I try to talk to him, he just, he doesn't care. He just says, 
He keeps telling me that if I will show him who made God, then he will believe me. And you can't, you know. The Bible says to leave him alone and to instruct no flesh or save his soul. I mean, I don't know. But um, we, like Brother Mike said, we need to really remember those people. Amen. I say this all the time at church that 24,000 people in America alone die today with over 500 car accidents and the other and every other thing possible. And you just wonder how many went out knowing that their name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. I was going to tell you, Robert, it's borders every day. Every day. Remember our home when our church took good news to the Agnes? Just really, I guess I'm not showing them. I should be around the aisles, but uh, I'm just really thankful that, that those people come forward and said that they would do that for us. Amen. But you know, by tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, I might forget what happens here tonight and I have no remembrance of it. But God said that He would never forget your labor of love and whatever that you've done in His name. Think about that. Never, Brother Mike. Be anything from the time you're born until you're laid to rest, anything that you do for the glory of God and for Him. He said he would never forget it. Isn't that wonderful news today? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And like I said, just remember our home and our church and we're glad to be here tonight. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes, remember this request. Any others? In my family. My little sweet young daughter is here growing up. And I wonder if time goes on. Congregation 
was singing a song and she was shouting and he turned around, stopped singing a song and walked over and said, quiet her down. <laughs> and went, just like that. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I just thought, oh my goodness, the Lord's going to no, I know what I'm going to do with you tomorrow when she gets going. He <laughs> 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 won't be right out in the parking lot, too. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's a shame anymore that you, you watch, you see churches and that. It's, it's not like it used to be. You know, it said we're, we're supposed to be the freest people. You know, God set us free, but we act like we're still in bondage. Amen. Remember this. Is there any other requests? Jacob, remember me on uh, people wanted me to join this TikTok group thing and I did and uh, I just want to be a light to people out there. Out people who don't know Jesus because it's very important to me to tell my testimony and tell them what the Lord has done for me in my life. He's done so much for me. I cannot, I cannot express it all, but God has been so good to me. Any others? Any others? If not, I know we have one spoken from this man. You want me to raise my hand? Let's all pray together. Yeah. I left it in the car. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I didn't. I left it right here. Yeah. One thing, I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm so glad to see you. You know, Josh pulled out this old song book, and I tell you what, I started remembering some songs that we, uh, hadn't sung in a long time. And, uh, I'll probably never be able to find I've never used a song book. But uh, I'm getting to the age now. I try to remember. Anybody here tired and feel worn out sometimes? I'm glad the Lord said 
when we're weak, he's strong. Amen. Amen. That's what this song reminds me of. It says, I can count on you, Lord. When I've gone just as far as I can go, I can count on you, Lord, to carry my load. When I've done everything I know to do, I can count on
it's okay to get down there, but there comes a time when you get done, you gotta get back up off the ground. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Just get closer home. Anyway, you probably know this song. You know, you can help me sing it. I, I haven't sung this as much, but it was on my heart to sing it today. Because I really feel like I can say, and many of you can say the same thing, I've been blessed. Amen. I have been blessed. Amen. Forty some years. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God bless you, Lord. God bless you. Let it be Lord. And, uh, yes, they did. He didn't have to. No. He didn't have to come looking for me. Amen. You know, Brother Phil was talking about, well, he's heard my testimony. God found me and dealt with me at 2 o'clock in the morning coming yes, from a big did. old party. Amen. Yeah. He was waiting on me. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I don't know how your prayer was, but my started out, God, I don't know why you're messing with yes, me. Yes, they did. <laughs> I know hell's real. I deserve yes, to go. I get that. I don't know how to do this Christian thing. God got through all of that. Amen. You know what? I have been blessed. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Help us sing it. I love this song. He walks among us. All that he does. All of his mercy, all of his love, has been a wider to light every day. Even the world can never contain this I have been blessed. Warmth in the air, showers of spring, the laughter of summer, and the changing of bleak. Food on my table, a good place to sleep. Clothes on my back and shoes on my feet. Oh, I have been blessed. Oh, I have been blessed. God is so good to me. Blessed are His thoughts, are you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him. For being so kind. Amen. So good. And I have been blessed. Arms that will raise. Yes, and that more. Hands that can touch. And legs that can walk. Ears that can listen. Eyes that can see. Oh, I've got to pray. Yes, I've been Father and mother, nurture and raise, sister of brother, three memories made, our pastor to lead us, our altar to pray, strive to make a deal, and the blood that can save! God has been good, so, so good. good, and I 
love me, but most of all for forgiveness. I have had something going on for two or three days now. Uh, I haven't wanted to come to church. I didn't want to get up here and sing. Don't want to do nothing, you know. I'm just so aggravated with myself, and I take it out on poor Arnie. <laughs> God bless him. He's the sweetest person I've ever known in my whole life. The best person I have ever known in my whole life. And he's, he's the one I'm taking out on. And I feel so unworthy just standing up here even talking about God. But he forgives me. Amen. He forgives me. And I love him and I thank him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. You know, I'm going to take an opportunity here and say I thank God for my salvation. Amen. God has made all the world to me. I look around, I see a lot of familiar faces. And I know their walk. Because I've seen them through the years. But you see faces in the community. They got something between them collarbones that stood the test of time. And that means something for them, man. There are people that you can say, hey, I need your prayer. I need help. And you can almost take to the bank. They'll be underneath praying for you. Amen. That's something. <clears throat>
he's been good to me. Um, today I was, I was at work and, you know, my, my job got pretty complicated. They added some things to me and sometimes it gets a little hard, you know, you wake up and you dread some of the things you might encounter throughout the day. And as I was praying, you know, and, and stuff today, I, I realized that it's the enemy. And that we have to understand who our enemy is. That's right. Amen. So we're going to start in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. We're going to be in 1 Peter 5, 8. And we're going to be in Job, if the good Lord permits. And let you guys uh, get there. I'm going to go to Lord in prayer. Most personally, Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come to your house, Lord, to worship you. Lord God, we ask that you have your way with this service, Lord, that you will bless those that need to be blessed, Lord, and there's somebody you're hurting in trouble, Lord, we ask that you, you give them that, that, God, that comfort, Lord, that they need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're going to be in the uh, 10th verse of chapter 6, and I wanted to point out some things here because, you know, Paul, he, uh, he wrote this letter, this epistle, this is one of the epistles he wrote when he was in prison. And, uh, you know, you think about that for a minute, there's a, uh, Philippians is also one of them, and in there, you know, he's in prison, and he's, he writes in there, rejoice, I say again, rejoice, and this man is in a prison where they are tormenting him, and they are, they aren't feeding him, and they are beating him daily, and there's, you know, all this stuff that they're doing to him, but yet he, he says, rejoice, I say again, rejoice, you know, and, and Ephesians, and he talks about the armor of God and how we have to we have to armor up for something, you know. And those books are some of the most uplifting books in the Bible. They're for us. They're for us to read and get encouragement because these men fought the battle. They fought their fight and they, Amen, were, brother, they were brother. trying to get to us and then get the information to us so that we could continue on that fight. And if you read here in uh, verse ten, it says, "Finally, my brethren." Be strong in the Lord and the power in His might. I want to stop right there for just a second. Because you see, he starts out with something very, very important. You know, he could have said, you know, be strong in yourself and be powerful in yourself. But what did he say? He said, be strong in the Lord and the power in His might. Why is that? Because he highlights that there is an adversary in the world Amen. that is powerful. Oh, and Peter, Lord. we'll find out in just a minute what Peter says about him. But it says that to put on the full armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the tricks of the devil. Amen. For we wrestle not, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities which are demons, against powers which are authorities, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, he's saying that we fight not amongst ourselves. See, Satan will make it seem that we are fighting amongst ourselves. He is really good at dividing churches and dividing people because he, he makes us think that we are against each other. But what he's saying here, what Paul is highlighting for you, is that you've got to be strong in the Lord and have power in his might because the devil's going to try everything he can to destroy you. And that's exactly what he's saying. You know, we encounter people in this world that seem like they hate us. You know, they hate everything about us. Amen. And we encounter these these people, and they, they seem to want nothing more than to talk bad about us. And you know, if you notice now, we are the haters. We are the ones that hate because we want to stand on the word of God. But let me assure you, church, that it is not those people that you are fighting against, but it is the Satan, the evil one. You see, so he tells us that we've got to dawn an armor, that we've got to stand with an armor to stand against those tricks that are cast against us. You see, Paul knew exactly what he was talking about. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. You know, Paul had quite a rough life there. Yeah, he was Saul of Tarsus at first. And he was... In the midst of killing Christians, he held the coats 
of the men that stoned Stephen. But then he got blinded on the road to Damascus. Amen. And, uh, he was sent to do God's work. And through that, he was stoned. He was lashed. He was beat. He was ridiculed. He was cast in prison yeah. for the beliefs of his God. Amen. Yeah. And he still writes, Rejoice. I say again, rejoice. That ought to tell you something, Jake. That even what, no matter what, Satan can throw against you, we can rejoice in the Lord God. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter 5 8. Verse 8 says this Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, what do you call him? The adversary, the devil, that's your enemy, church. It is not the people in this room. It is not the people in the world. But it is the adversary, the devil. And listen to what he says. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking who he will devour, who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished, in your brethren that are in the world. Let me tell you something. What Peter is saying here. He's saying, you know, yeah, he's a roaring lion. And he's seeking him in the bower. And let me tell you something about a lion. You know, they don't feast on the strong. They don't go after mm -hmm. the, the strong wildebeest. They don't go after the strong animal. They go after the weak. Yeah. They go after the young. They go after the ones that they can devour. So how do you stand against it? To the strength of God and the power in his might. You see, he follows it up there where he says, you know, that your brethren, they face the same afflictions. They face the same thing. That Satan does the same. Part of the tricks over and over and over that you're not the only one that's fighting Satan. That your brethren are involved as well. Amen. He says it when he says, Who resists that fast and faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished, are achieved in your brethren that are in the world. We are in this together. Amen. He is saying, Church, we are in this yes, together. Amen. Satan is not just going against you, he's going against your brothers and your sisters. And if we stand together in God's holy word, then he will have to flee. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Right. Let's go to Job. I apologize for bouncing around, but this is what God wanted me to do. Come on, brother. So we're going to start with the first verse, and I'm going to skip around a little bit, but I want you to understand what kind of man Job was. So the very first verse, it said, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Now, a lot of people, they get confused over the perfect and upright. I'm telling you right now, Job was just a man. He was not perfect. He did not not commit sin. He was a sinner like you and me. But the difference was, is his intentions towards God, his heart towards God, was perfect and upright, that he wanted to strive to serve and to be everything he could for God. And you read that down, it talks about all that he had, all of his substance. But in verse 6, I want to paint a picture for you. It says, Now there was a day when the sons of God 
And the Lord said unto him, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? You know, when I used to read that, I used to get kind of heartbroken. Because I'm like, why would God just offer up Job? Why would he do that? But then as I grew to understand how God works and what he was doing here, I said, what an honorable thing that God had confidence in this man Amen. to throw him out to Satan, knowing that Satan in all of his power couldn't make him shudder, couldn't make him cast down. What do you say that about me? That's where I get my heartbreak. What do you say that about Mike Smith? As Bless the Lord. Said, my servant Mike Smith. Church, that's an honorable thing to be in the foot or the, the shoes of Job. A man that God knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he would worship him through his turmoil. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's good. Help him, Jesus. God was setting Satan up for failure, is what he was doing. And Satan, knew, or God knew in all of Satan's pride that he wouldn't be able to see that big picture. Amen. Okay. Keep reading. Then Satan answered the Lord, said, Don't Job fear God for not. Hast not thou made a hedge about him? Right there he admits it. Isn't he protected? Don't you have him protected? I can't do anything as long as that hedge is around him. Yeah. About his house and all that he had on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance has increased the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all he had, and he will curse thee in thy face. He's saying, Job only loves you because you bless him. That's what he's saying. Yeah. You got this hedge of protection around him. Yeah. Nothing's ever come against him. Yeah. Yeah. He only loves you because you bless him. Yeah. Now I'll make him. I'll make him curse you. I'll make him curse you. But it gets better. Amen. Bless the Lord. Because in verse 12. The Lord gave him a commandment that Satan absolutely, without a doubt, had to follow. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all he had, that hedge that he had protected him, was now removed. God said, All he had Bless the Lord. is in thy power, <laughs> only upon himself. Yes, Put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. I'll remove the hedge. Amen. And everything he's got is yours to take. Amen. Save his life. Yep. And let me tell you something. No matter what, no matter how powerful Satan might have thought he was, he couldn't touch the yes, Lord. Amen, glory. Because he had to bow down to the authority of God. When God said everything he's got is in your power, except his life. That wasn't a suggestion. That was absolutely a commandment. Amen. Amen. Satan had to follow it. Right. So church, let me tell you something. As children of God, we fight every single day. If you don't, you got a problem. If you're not fighting Satan every single day, then you got to hit this altar and pray. Because you're exactly where Satan wants you to be. Amen. That's right. But when you try to live the life, Dave, when you try to tell people about a Savior that went to the Calvary to die for the sins of mankind, and when you try to stand and preach the word or sing his praises, you're going to have a battle. You're going to have a fight. Amen. It's inevitable. So that we better don that armor. Amen. We better stop fleeing. Because we are not called to run. We are called to stand the ground and stand on God's holy word. Amen. Church, Satan is evil. There's no doubt about it. He proves it every single day. Look out in the world. Watch the news. 
be counted as martyrs. That's what it tells me in Revelation. That if you stand in that bed, you will die. Let me tell you something. With all the things that I've been through in life, I'll never, ever get back to that position again as long as I keep God in my forefront. Right. Amen. And I will preach the word of God until I draw my last breath. Because I, I owe it to him. I owe it to my Savior to tell this world that is lost and dying about a man who can cleanse them from everything, that can help them through all of their trials, can help them with all of their problems, and it only takes one single drop of blood. Bless the Lord. Church, this, this world needs Jesus. We had better be about the Father's business. Yeah. Are we going to fight absolutely? Satan's going to do everything he can. Every He's going to pull out every stop. He's going to play every dirty little trick, every game he can to deter you from your, your mission. What is your mission, church? To reach the lost. That is our single mission. Yeah. As men and women of God, we are to be telling people that Jesus is the answer. Amen. That's right. And he's dirty in his games. Yes. Let me tell you what happened to me last week. I'm sitting here at work. We're doing a crane training class for mobile cranes, me and Jake. And we're at Boss Lunch. And, you know, I'm going about my business eating Doritos. Next thing I know, I snapped my tooth in half. Ooh. Never had one problem with teeth in my life. With breaking and stuff like that. You know, those are the kinds of things that he does. Just little things that take your eyes off of God. I was so down about that. And pain, hurting. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I said was, God, I worship you. I complained about it like a big baby. <laughs> we keep reading down. I want to get. Through the rest of this scripture, Lord willing. And as, as Satan left God's presence, he then began to torment Job. And if you read, starting in verse 13, it said, And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I, only I, escaped to tell thee. But pay attention, because it says, while he was yet speaking, that means that the servant didn't even leave yet, that the servant wasn't even done giving him bad news. And another one came and said, the fire of God has fallen from heaven and has burned up the sheep. And the servants had consumed them. And I only have escaped to tell thee. And listen to verse 17. While he was yet speaking. So that servant didn't leave yet. And there came also another. The Chaldeans made out with the bands. And fell upon the camels. And carried them away. Yea, and slay the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only have escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there also came another and said, Thy sons, thy daughters, were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young man, and they are dead. And I only have escaped alone to tell thee. Let me tell you something. Doesn't that sound familiar? Bless Doesn't Lord. that sound like Satan? Yes, amen. Because when he piles it on, he just keeps going. He just keeps going and going and going. Let me tell you, when I get in those positions, I did not react the way that Job did right here. Listen to what Job did in verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. He got as humble 
as long as he could, and he worshipped. Bless him, Lord. How many times have you worshipped God mm -hmm. in the midst of satanic attack? Amen. <laughs> How many times? Well, if I'm being honest, not very many. Dave, not very many. I broke a tooth off and cried like a baby. Can you imagine the position or the way that I act when things even more severe happen? Mm -hmm. Shame on me. We ought to be worshiping our Lord through the good times and definitely through the bad times. Amen. You want growth in your life? You want to be blessed in your life? You want Satan to flee from you? Then you worship God. Amen. In your times of troubles, and when you're up on that mountain. Amen. My mom sings a song. There's like six guitars here. I think I'm going to ask you to sing it, because you can remember it. What is the bloodline? And that song, it talks about how Satan, you know, come against you, but they won't give him the victory. Because Brother Dave, he cannot cross that bloodline. <laughs> Let me tell Amen. you something. Bless the Lord. When you are saved and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, bought and purged with the price, yes, Amen. Satan can only go so <laughs> yes, far. Amen. He cannot make it past that line Amen. that's drawn in the sand, that day of Calvary. If you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, <laughs> then he'll never cross that bloodline. Because my big brother made him clean. <laughs> Church, we ought to be happy. Are we going to fight, Dave? Yeah, we're going to fight. You're no stranger to the fight. Amen. Jake, you're no stranger to the fight. Terry, you're no stranger to the fight. Church, you're no stranger to the fight. But we ought to be worshiping God in that fight because Satan is coming against you for a reason. And we better start worshiping God. Amen. I want to read one more scripture that the Lord laid on my heart. It's Isaiah chapter 40. Even the youth shall faint be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But, Amen. but, <laughs> they that wait upon, upon the Lord... <laughs> Shall we do this? Yes, amen. amen. They shall run amen. with wings <laughs> and eagles. They shall run and amen. not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Let me tell you something. When Satan gets you to that point where it's hard to walk, where you can't run, where you feel defeated, where you're hurting, where you're broken, let me tell you something. When you call out on God and wait for his touch, your strength will be renewed. Church, that's the purpose of revival. Amen. Just to renew your strength. Amen. Amen. You don't have to walk around with your head down. Amen. You don't have to walk around hurting mm -mm. with this look on your face. You can walk around with a smile. Because God can renew your strength. Amen. Bless the Lord. We all stand. <laughs> Are you able to do that song or no? Church, you might be here today. And you're just weak. You're just weak. Satan has just dragged you through the mud. You're not alone. Don't think that you're alone. He's drugged me through the mud plenty of times in my life, Diane. Plenty of times. You know, he got me so bad to the That's point, Josh, my Help him. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to be around anybody that wanted to go to church. My own wife would go to church, and I'd sit at home like a bump on a log. <laughs> I didn't want to be there. 
And it wasn't until 2013. Yes, amen. In a little hospital room. <laughs> when I cried out to God. I said, God, I'm in a situation that I can't control. I don't like being, I don't like not being in control. Amen. God, if there's nothing that I can do. I said, if you save my baby, I'll give you my life. He saved my baby in a way that I didn't expect. She went on to be with Jesus. And I got called to preach two years later. And I'll tell you something. God never left me in any of those situations. Every single time Dad, that I got down or in a position, Jake, where I was lost and undone and broken and the connection was gone. I wasn't lost physically or, or spiritually with God. I was saved. But I was wandering a lost woods somewhere. It was because I turned my back on Jesus. And when I saw him, he was right there to be found. See, he ain't lost. We're the ones that get twisted and finagled. We're the ones that get our positions in a different coordinate than God. But when we seek him out, he's right where we left him. Amen. Standing right where we left him. Amen. Go ahead and sing. Even though my spirit is all in seems I can't hardly go but still. Maybe you're here and you're broken. And you're weak. You want revival. Come and get it. God's got the power to give you strength and renew it. He says he does. He says when you're weak in our faith, that he can renew your strength. Won't you come?
give you one more opportunity. You don't have to go home weak. You don't have to go home burdened. It just takes you putting forth the effort. You know, when you read about renewing the strength and taking up wings of eagles, there's something very special you can understand. An eagle is the only bird that will fly into a storm. And the reason they do it, Brother Mikey, is so they can soar higher. As God's people, we should be striving to soar higher. Even in the storm. Get another song. You know what? We'll go ahead and we'll have fellowship. That way we can get you moving in case you do need to stop at the altar and you walk on by.
<laughs> we had enough. Well, glory. <laughs> it's more than Amen. <laughs> well, glory. been looking back upon this winding road to the old familiar markers of the mercy I had known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche. There's no better words to tell you than to say, help me if you know it. God's been good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dream. When I go to sleep each night, and though I had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood. Hallelujah. Through it all. God's been good, times for play that I can see. I cried some bitter tears, I like this. But I felt his arms all around me as I faced my darkest fear. <laughs> Woo! Lost it. And I know more joy than hurt has its grace for me. So undeserved, help me. God's been good in my life. I've been blessed because as I go to sleep each night, and though I had my share of part time, by my side is always stood through it all. God's been good. I, for God has been my father. They call him Abba. He's my savior and my friend. His love is my beginning. And his love will be my end. I can spend forever trying to tell you everything. My God is. But the best way. That I can say is this, God's been good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dream as I go to sleep each night. And though I share a part time, but my side is always good. Through it all, God's been good. God is good. I feel revived. Amen. 
can't tell me it's not real when you feel what you feel. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. If the world could just get a hold of a little bit of it. Amen. Amen. I'll go further and say that our bodies couldn't hold them. The only way to get our new body. <laughs> Amen. God is good to us. Yes, he is. Yeah. I was asleep. I knew you'd be ticked off if I didn't show up, so I had to. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a job to do it. You're right, brother. Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> People want to preach him at me. <laughs> hey, well. <what else? laughs> that means you're ticked off, preacher. I just love the Lord. A lot of my time running. Mm -hmm. It's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. A lot of whooping in that running. Mm -hmm. But you still had, had that mercy on me. Any time, if anybody in this world could have run it out, I could have run it out. But it just kept coming every day. Every day. So that day I broke. Amen. That's the kind of God I serve. I've been there I've been 20, 25 years doing stupid stuff. But I knew I was saved. And God took care of me. Daddy had that mercy to him. He said, y'all, I'll, I'll lay the ashes to the foot of the tree. If they don't bear good fruit, I'll hew it down. And he could have took me out of here anytime he wanted to. I can be seen today. He's seen that time where I was running around. I'm thankful for his mercy. Amen. Brother Jacob, uh, I don't know if this sister wants me to tell her. Uh, she's on here right now on Facebook, and uh, she's dealing with a lot of health issues. I can't say what it is, but she needs our prayers. Her name is Sister Sandy. Uh, she needs our prayers. Mother Just pray for her. Pray. God truly is good. You know, I can tell you, I've rarely ever succeeded for him, Brother Mikey. But I can tell you that he's never failed me. Amen. He's never failed me. He's never failed to be there for me. Anyone else? Have you ever thought about and thought for the message? One thing we have to remember is Job didn't have the book of Job. Matter of fact, he didn't get a heads up what was going on. The only thing Job didn't get about it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, and, and the verse that goes with that is that in Job 5, we have in the New Testament it says, For we know all things.
think, really, when <laughs> you're having things that God allows, that maybe you look back and see and say, wow, God did that. Mm-hmm. You know, and people might pat you on the back and think you did good. Hey, I, I know me better than that. Yeah. <laughs> I like failed with flying colors. But God is good. Anyone else? If not, we have service again tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. Come and be with us. Uh, Brother Mike, can you close this one thing? Dear Lord, we thank you again, Lord, for being in this service. We will see you at 6 o'clock tomorrow. So 6 o'clock tomorrow. Coefficient, your love, Lord, is unconditional, Lord. We're so thankful for that because I'm not always a brother, Lord.